Hi everybody and welcome to another Hangout, our Wednesday afternoon Hangout. I'm Tisa Blackburn and today we're going to talk about gels, all about gels and what you can make them do and how they look and all that fancy stuff. So let us jump right into some gel information. The first, uh, the first gel we're going to talk about is Heavy Gel Gloss. I'm going to show that to the camera. Now, if you were with me last week, we did a gel extension, and that's a really cool thing to do with gels. That's a way to um, extend your, your paint and not lose any quality. And of course, you all know that I'm using golden paint because it has a high pigment load when I'm doing that gel extension. So check that out um, on the YouTube channel. There's a recording of last week's Hangout there for you. But today we're going to talk about all the different things that gels can do. And in particular, we're going to talk about the three main characteristics of gels, which are the surface sheen, whether they're shiny or matte, the thickness, whether they're thick or thin, and the opacity, whether you can see through those guys or whether they're completely opaque. So I'm going to show you a few gels. Before I do that, I want to... Um, go to the overhead camera and show you some dry sample boards of some gels and then I'm going to put some gels out and uh, mix some paint into them so you can have a look at that too. Okay, so let's jump over to the overhead camera right now and you can have a look at my work table here. I have a bunch of different gels out for us to look at but the first thing I want you to take a look at here, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. The first thing I want you to take a look at are the different surface sheens that you can get with gels. So I'm going to show you this gel and you know what I just realized I want to take my camera off of autofocus because it'll kind of make it crazy um, if I don't do that. Okay there we go. That should be fine now. Okay so this first, uh, first board that I'm going to show you is Heavy Gel Matte. And I'm going to kind of tip it so you can see how waxy it looks. Now the next one I'm going to show you is Soft Gel Gloss. And I'm going to hold that to the camera there. See the sheen on that? I'm going to try and flip it towards the window so you can see the glossy sheen here on these areas. Now look at these two together. Put them side by side. I hope the camera's picking up that the glossy and then the, the matte. Really important to take this into consideration when you're purchasing um, gels or mediums for that matter. Anything that has matte in the name is going to give you a more waxy appearance. And you may or may not like that. But one thing that will happen if you use a fair amount of matte gels or mediums in your paint is that it will gray down the color over a period of time. So you can see just looking at these two that this paint right here looks a little bit more dull than this one. Okay, and these are the same colors that I'm using there. So bear that in mind, if you're using a lot of matte gel, I'm just going to kind of keep tipping it back and forth, hoping the camera picks up that shiny versus matte appearance there. Um, bear in mind that if you use a, a, a fair amount of matte products in your paint and layer upon layer of that, eventually you will gray down the color a little bit just because that matting agent is not transparent and so it will have an impact on your color. I'm going to just check the chat room real quick and see if we've got any questions. Okay, looks like we're good. All right, so that is one of the main things I want you to take into account, the matte versus the gloss, the surface sheen, okay? Now, the next thing I want you to take into account when you're buying gels is whether or not they're absorbent. And I'm holding the wrong board. Let me get another board here. Um, whether or not they're absorbent. So you're looking at this board right here. I'll hold it up a little bit so you can see it a little better in the camera. And these are all paste gels. Um, and a paste is always going to be opaque. So it's going to look like white, uh, that you're adding white to the, to the paint. 
and in fact you you are kind of adding a white and when I do the mixing demo here in a minute you're gonna see what I mean but the uh, paste mediums nine times out of ten are gonna be more absorbent than uh, like a gloss gel so you're looking at fiber paste here crackle paste um, coarse molding paste and light molding paste these four gels or these four paste mediums are very absorbent and uh, at some point we will do some stuff with water media and I'll show you about fiber paste which I, I really love fiber paste I use a lot of that to create a real absorbent surface on uh, canvas so you could basically take fiber paste and turn it turn your canvas into a piece of watercolor paper and um, I'll show you a little bit more about fiber paste here in a minute but that is the idea with paste mediums they're opaque and most of the time they are going to be absorbent the one exception to that is molding paste just what golden calls just molding paste it's not very absorbent so pay pay attention to that so that is an opacity issue paste uh, paste mediums paste gels are going to be opaque and act like white all right okay so that's the scoop on that um, and then the other thing that you want to take into account when you're buying gels is whether they're thick or thin so here is a board that shows you some different gels and you're gonna see here that some of these are thick and some of them are a little thinner so if you look at tar gel here I'm going to flip it so the camera can kind of see it. I might have a hard time seeing that. Let's flip it this way. So you can see how thin it is. That may be why it's a little bit hard to see. And then look at the heavy gel gloss right here. The thickness on that, the two of those. I'll flip it there so you can see it. Um, the two very different thicknesses, okay? If you want texture, you're going to want a thick gel if you want something to lay down flat without much texture you could actually use tar gel you can puddle tar gel and make it lay down flat but you would probably want to use a soft gel for a softer um, brush stroke okay so then we've got gels that have things in them what we call aggregates this particular one right here is glass beads I'll show you a couple more we've got clear granular gel here which also has some aggregate material in it this has chunky little bits of plastic and they are more irregular they're more squarish than the beads the glass beads that you see here in the glass beads these are more regular they're transparent little bits of glass little glass beads and it's actual glass and the, um, the, the glass beads are about the size of a sesame seed and they're uniform in size. The difference is the clear granular beads are chunky, squarish, and not uniform. Okay, so there they are together. You can kind of see them there. All right, and they both dry very, very transparent. Both the clear granular and the glass beads dry really transparent. Finally, I want to show you this board, which is a board about um, making acrylic encaustic, making acrylic gels look like encaustic. And this really speaks to the idea of the matte versus the gloss issue. So if you're using things like high solid matte or heavy gel matte or soft gel matte, if you're using things like that, you can really make it look very, very waxy which may be something you want to do um, if you don't like the glossy look. So there you go. That uh, speaks to that issue of matte versus gloss. Okay. And then finally, I'll just show you this little board that talks a little bit about gels that have aggregate material or gels that create texture. So here is clear granular gel. This is coarse pumice up here. This is glass beads and this is fine pumice. Very different types of texture. But if you look carefully at the um, clear granular gel and the glass beads together, you can see that the irregularity here of the clear granular gel is pretty prominent. 
and then the the regular sort of uniform shape of those glass beads is is pretty apparent there I get that question a lot like why would I use glass beads instead of clear granular gel and this is the reason because of the uniformity in the glass beads and the irregularity in the clear granular gel that's the main difference okay they both dry pretty clear all right well I'm gonna just jump over here to the chat room and see if we've got any questions it looks like we're okay there I don't see any questions over on YouTube so I'm gonna forge ahead and let's um, take a look at mixing some some color into some of these gels to see how they behave okay I want to show you a little bit about transparency opacity alright so let's go back over to the overhead camera here let me grab that okay so here we are back in our overhead camera the first gel that I want to talk to you about is glass beads and um, this is the one that has those wonderful little glass beads that dry very clear now you can see when I'm pulling it out of the jar here see how it has a kind of a slightly green cast to it it almost looks like sea glass doesn't it and it's in this white polymer and again now remember anything that is in a white polymer like this and says that it's going to dry clear then that white polymer is going to uh, dry clear so you're not really getting a white okay so I'm going to put a little glass beads out here and I'm going to put a little quin magenta in it just a drop or two actually that's too much quin magenta but see how well it takes the the paint now again if you were with me last week when I did the gel extension and it looked like I was adding white to the paint remember I'm not adding white this is going to dry clear and somewhere along the way I have lost my little piece of paper hang on a second you guys give me a second I'll be right back I gotta go grab my paper nothing like running up three flights of stairs <laughs> to get something I forgot uh, okay let me uh, put some paper out so I can show you this gel mixture let's go back to the overhead camera while I catch my breath ay 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 get a little work out there of course I'm on the bottom floor and everything I need is on the third floor so okay so I, I mixed the Quin Magenta here into the glass beads and I'm just going to spread it out on my page here and when it dries it'll dry back to just Quin Magenta with glass beads now of course it's not going to dry while we're on camera here but I can post a picture of it later so you can see but it's going to be very very transparent and let's uh, take a look at this one it's going to be very very transparent you're going to be able to see right through it okay so that's the glass beads the next one I want to show you is the fiber paste so I'm going to get a fresh plate and I'll mix a little fiber paste here Now fiber paste, the thing about fiber paste that I like so much is that it almost behaves like a, um, a watercolor paper pulp. It's very uh, fibrous and in fact it looks kind of like watercolor paper pulp, doesn't it, in the jar. So when you put it out it's going to feel kind of like paper pulp and then you can tint it 
Let's tint it with a little yellow. Put a drop of yellow in it. You can tint it and create a colored background that is going to be very um, absorbent. Now when this dries, it's going to behave just like watercolor paper. It's going to look like watercolor paper. It's going to be absorbent like watercolor paper. It's pretty amazing. Pretty doggone amazing. So let's put it out here. Okay, so that's our fiber paste mixture. And that's going to dry opaque. All right, now the next one I want to show you is coarse molding paste. And this is kind of, um, you know, it's almost a mixture. I've got something in here that I should have taken out. It's almost a mixture of, um, it kind of feels like a mixture of fiber paste and light molding paste to me. I like it. It's got a much uh, rougher texture than light molding paste. So let me just show you how this one looks when we mix it up. I'm going to actually just mix it right here in the plate next to my fiber paste. Just move some of that to the side there. Okay, little coarse molding paste here. And how about a little phthalo blue this time? And phthalo blue is so strong, we just need barely a drop, a tiny, tiny drop. These pigments are very powerful. So see that tiny drop of phthalo blue? And I can paint the entire room <laughs> with phthalo blue. It's so powerful. Okay, so mix that up. And again, I will um, take a picture of these when they're dry and uh, post it for you so you get a feeling for it. So I've got some pretty baby pastel colors going here, don't I? Pink, yellow, and blue. Looks like I'm painting a baby's room. Okay, so that is the coarse molding paste. And again, that will dry opaque. Okay, so let me just jump over here see if we have anything in our chat room we need to any questions we have I'm just gonna talk to the camera here for a second okay so we got the three of those wet mixtures down and I want to kind of show you a little um, mixture a little water media just working a tiny bit on top of the one of these that I have if I can find it. I haven't been able to find anything. <laughs> Here we go back to the um, overhead and here's a little board that has some of the coarse molding paste on it right here. You can see that and this is graphite. It's just a graphite pencil here. Um, I'm going to grab that graphite pencil the nice thing about the uh, coarse molding paste is that it gives you a surface that's kind of, it, it's rough. It's rough enough to take things like colored pencil and pastel and at the same time you could use a pencil on it and get a line. Um, the fiber paste is a little bit too textural for this, although you can smooth the fiber paste out. The coarse molding paste, um, I like it better for this. So if you look here, and I've got this um, graphite pencil, and then of course you know graphite's water soluble. So depending on what you want to do, you could lay down a really nice drawing and on the coarse molding paste and then get some lovely grays and get a kind of a wash thing going on. Now this is just a regular, this this pencil right here, that's just a regular number two 
funky number two pencil. This pencil right here, this pencil mark that you're seeing on the edge, this is the general sketch wash pencil, which I really love. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in that between this and just your regular number two pencil that you get at the grocery store, right? So these, the general sketch wash gives you some really gorgeous uh, grays and blacks and things that you can't get with just a regular number two. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes for you so you'll get that. So that's a little bit about coarse molding paste and glass beads and fiber paste there for you. Now, um, I'm just wondering if we've got anybody in the chat room because I want to give away some paint. So I'm looking to see if I've got anybody in the chat room. I'm going to just put some music on for a minute and I'm um, go see if I have chat people and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I'm going to um, see if anybody's into the chat room. If you are, give me um, a hello so I know I can give some paint away. I've got heavy gel gloss, um, fiber paste, and a couple of samples here, green gold and uh, quinacridone nickel azo gold to give away. So I want you to pick a number between 1 and 10, and somebody's over there, there's Granny, Granny's in the video, hi Granny, <laughs> um, am I saying that right? Granny double tap it looks like, okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 10, and I'm going to write it on my, my phone right here. You know, I could just be old school and actually write it on a piece of paper, but I don't have one. So <laughs> I have to be like all fancy. Uh, so I'm going to write a number between 1 and 10 on my phone, and you guys guess and put it in the chat box, and I will give you some paint. How about that? Okay, so here we go. I'm writing it right now and I'm going to make it nice and big so you can see it on the camera. Okay. All right, I'm ready. So, um, give, me a, give me a guess as to what that number is. It's a number between 1 and 10, and I will send you some paint, okay? Hopefully you're in the United States because it's only open in the United States because if I send it anywhere else in the world, you have to pay some kind of weird, uh, you know, customs tax or something. So it's crazy. So as long as you're in the United States, I can send you paint, okay? All right, so number between 1 and 10, put it in the chat box, and I will send you some paint. In the meantime, while you're doing that, let's go look at the Golden website. I want to take you over to the Golden website page and take a look at this. So now you should be seeing a page on the Golden website that talks all about the gels. And I encourage you all to visit the website and to get over there. Hi, Rizzoni. I hope I'm saying that night name right. Hi, Rizzoni100. I see you there. Howdy. Um, you guys have a chance to get a little, some, some free paint. Oh, Granny, you're in Canada? Darn. Darn, darn, darn. Well, if you have an American mailing address, you can still guess. And I've had people do that before. So if you, if you have a friend that's in, you know, upstate New York or something, you can still do that. 
So you guys guess, and um, I'll get back to that in just a minute, but I want to introduce you to the Golden website if you haven't been there before. I really encourage you to get over there and take a look at all of the information that's there. This is a page on gels, and here's another page coming up for you to take a look at. Lots of information. Just get a cookie and a cup of coffee and get over there and cruise around tons and tons of stuff for you all to look at lots of information lots of good videos you know all that kind of stuff here's another um, image from the website that talks about gels and um, you know you can always get tech support uh, if you have questions you can always get tech support over there at golden and send them emails you can send me emails too now I'm going to come back and um, talk a little bit about the uh, creative flow class that I have coming up tomorrow night and uh, I want to give this away hold on let's give away some paint where did my thing go okay okay granny you said number six and Rizzoni you said number nine and the number is seven so granny you're closest but you're in canada right rena okay rena thank you <laughs> i was calling you by your handle rena um it looks like you won rena because it looks like granny's in canada unfortunately okay so rena if you will go to my website at acrylicdiva.com i'm going to put it right here in the chat box for you go to acrylicdiva.com and go to my contact page and send me an email with your snail mail address so I can send you some paint okay and that will be heavy gel gloss um, fiber paste and quinacridone nickel azo gold and green gold yum okay yeah, no contact in uh, in the U.S., huh? Well, I'm just going to have to get to Canada, right? Now, if you're up in Canada, I don't know what part you're in, but my my good buddy, Melanie Matthews, is in Montreal, and she is an amazing golden working artist, and uh, you should definitely check her out. We also have someone in Vancouver, We've got people in Canada, so I'm sure um, I'm sure you'll you'll find some good golden stuff up there. Okay, all right. Now back to creative flow. Well, I love seeing you guys uh, here on face uh, Facebook and YouTube. I love that because that means you've got some tech, some technology. Uh, chops there and one of the things that's so great about this technology is that I can I can speak to you guys and give you information and help you out no matter where you are in the world and one thing I want to encourage you to do is to get over to my creative flow site and I'm gonna just pop the link here in here just go to I'm gonna grab it right here while we're talking okay Bear, bear with me a second. I've got a lot of windows open. <laughs> As you know, I'm always running around with a bunch of windows open. Um, I'm going to just grab this, this share button for you super quick here and get you that. So you can get over to the Creative Flow page. Let's, let me put it into the um, chat box for you. There you go. Okay, now you've got the page to go to Creative Flow. And I want to just tell you a little bit about that class because I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It's really inexpensive. It's $6.99 a month. The first two weeks are free. But um, every Thursday night, you're going to come back to YouTube. It's going to be on my workshop page. Come back to YouTube. And I have some gorgeous music that I have sourced. I'm going to be doing a different project every week. We're going to have an hour of painting and wonderful music, and it's it's pretty cool. I really like doing it, so I hope you'll join me over there. Okay, all right. So now I have uh, you have my undivided attention, and I want to answer any kinds of acrylic painting questions you may have. Um, so please let me know. 
that's what I'm here for okay so what can I do for you in terms of problem solving um, and granny I see that you have been uh, taking the newsletter from Golden kudos to you it's awesome isn't it don't you love it it's the best yeah lots of really good information lots of cool stuff there okay so any questions for me about any particular techniques that you're working with that you really want to you know problem solve or anything like that let me know and Rena you got the information about sending me your snail mail address I see that good perfect all right okay I'm just looking here at the monitor to make sure we're good looks like we're pretty good okay um, while I'm waiting to see if you have any questions I have a couple more things to show you let me swing around in my magic chair I'm gonna go to the overhead camera so I can just show you this real quick first I'll show you my messy desk with all my stuff get that out of the way then the next thing I want to show you if I can get my hands to grab it is what's coming up in a couple of weeks on uh, our, our YouTube live we're gonna talk about if I can get my fingers to work we're gonna talk about special purpose polymers so this is gonna be pretty cool let me get some of this stuff out of the way this is gonna be pretty cool because there are some really cool polymers that Golden has that um, you can do just about anything you want to it's pretty amazing uh, you can use uh, the acrylic paint to stiffen textile you can ex of course you can extend it we all know that um, you can actually paint on fabric with it very cool stuff and that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks uh, when we do our our YouTube live um, I'll be talking about these special purpose polymers and then in another couple of weeks we're going to be doing some stuff with water media I'll be showing you how to do some some pretty cool stuff with water media all right so that's the scoop on that let me come back over here and looks like we're good to go it doesn't look like I've got any burning questions over in the chat room let me just make sure I'm not leaving anybody out okay all right double check yeah okay so granny you're in Vancouver um oh my brain oh I just adore her too we had the most fun the last time I was in Vancouver our working artist in Vancouver is oh I should know this blonde really cute and sweet shame on me my you know it's that one brain cell gone just gone <laughs> I wish I had a good excuse but I'm so bad with names go to the golden website and uh, look at the working artist program and I can see her as clear as day we had so much fun in Vancouver the last time I was up there all right so uh, anything else okay Rena you find yourself stuck sometimes when your work gets too dark is there any way to fix it well one of the things that I think um, is important to understand when your work gets too dark is that you need to work in transparent layers of color uh, really really put yourself on a color diet what I like to call a color diet and and in the Facebook live in the YouTube lives we're going to be talking about color because um, it is a big big thing with me and as you can see you know I like color right um, but one of the things I think it's really important to do when you find your work getting too dark is to back off and sit with it a while and then maybe bring some light back so there's a way that you can underpaint with titanium white and then glaze over it with um, lighter transparent layers of color so I'm um, just trying to think if I have a video that addresses that 
There might be a video on the YouTube channel that addresses that, but we'll definitely be addressing that in a future YouTube and Facebook Live because I'm going to be talking about the issue of transparent and opaque color. And one of the things that you might be thinking about looking at if you're having trouble with your paintings getting too dark is you might look at the type of pigments that you're using because you know there are two types of pigments when we make paint there are mineral pigments and modern pigments and the mineral pigments nine times out of ten when paintings are getting muddy and dark the mineral pigments are usually the culprit what that means is you probably want to shift your palette over to something with more transparent modern pigments and I think I've got let me see if I've got the mixing guide handy so I can show you what I mean about the difference between modern and mineral pigments. Whoops, now I'm throwing things. Okay, so this is um, the mixing guide, the modern color mixing guide. So Rena, you say that you're getting, um, that you're still getting muddy color even with when you're using the modern pigments. And you guys forgive me if I don't get your question right away because there's a little bit of a lag in the YouTube chat box. So if I don't get it right away, that's the reason. So you're using modern pigments and you're still getting muddy color. That leads me to believe that you are probably not using transparent layers of color. That you're probably using um, more opaque layers of color. So I want you to think about that and then I also want you to, I'm going to hold this up to the camera like this, you see these eight colors across the top? Let me get that so you can see it. Those are the eight mixing colors and those are the most important colors for you to have. And I'll leave it here for a second so you can take a good look at it and then later when the recorded version of this goes up you can pause the video and look at that and get those eight colors but those eight colors are the only ones you really need and they're all going to be transparent and they will help you make good clean color so come back um, the next time we'll have a YouTube live a Facebook live um, it's going to be in a couple of weeks that we that we talk about color but keep checking in and make sure that you're on the um, the uh, mailing list. Make sure that you're on my mailing list so that you get advance notice about the topic uh, when I'm going to do uh, when I'm going to do live YouTube. It happens inside Facebook. I'm going to put the Facebook link here so that you can actually sign up for that particular um, uh, newsletter or not newsletter that mailing list. Let me just grab it for you real quick so that you will get a notice and it'll say we're going to do blah 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 this week so you'll know when I'm going to do color let me grab it okay now if you're in Facebook I'm excuse me if you are in um, YouTube right now watching me you may not have this link so go to that link right there that I just put in the chat box and um, sign up for that, log into that, and you will get the advance notice. And then you'll know what's coming up um, on the live feed. Okay, and you think maybe, you think that is the issue not using layers. You think it's the color issue, Rena? That might be it. It usually is. It usually is. And then the other thing I want you all to think about, too, it depends on whether you're painting abstracts or, I mean, it doesn't depend on whether you're painting abstracts or representational. You should always be thinking about the value of the painting and a really good way to keep your painting from getting too dark as you go along is to take photos, just take photos with your phone and put it on black and white. Take all the color out and put it on black and white. And then bam, you'll be able to see right away if everything is all dark then you definitely need to bring some light back into it and try that thing where I talked about underpainting in titanium white, glazing back over it with transparent layers of glaze, okay? If you are on um, Facebook with me, uh, either on my personal page or on the Acrylic Diva page, I am working on a piece right now in the studio that I've been posting pictures. It's a, it's a white lotus 
in a uh, with a lot of green and blue and stuff that lotus is painted in an opaque white and now I'm going to start the glazing on top of it in transparent layers so follow along with that and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about okay all right good question that's a really good question and it's also something that almost everybody runs into in their painting career I just had a student yesterday in class had to back up and paint a bunch of stuff back in in titanium white because the painting got away from her and sometimes they do sometimes the paintings just take off down the road and you're like yeah wait a minute so um, try to follow my other rule which is the 90 10 rule for every 90 minutes that you paint you should be looking for 10 minutes just sitting there in your chair looking at the painting that's hard to do but try it it really works all right um, yeah you guys get over there to Facebook and follow me around the internet and you'll see you'll see those things get posted as they get completed because I do um, put up some working shots there's a couple of pretty cool videos over there on my Facebook page too that show how I use the high flow and the flow release on big pieces of canvas and literally pour the paint and it just drips down and stuff so that's some fun stuff okay all right it looks like I've answered all the questions once again congratulations Rena getting some paint in the mail be sure you get me your address there uh, go over to acrylicdiva.com and and just uh, go to the contact page and send me an email you're awesome you all are so awesome this will be posted the recording will go up later tonight and you can also find it on my blog next week in case you missed anything and you just want to you know get those questions answered okay um, let me just grab the chat box real quick yeah the the 90 10 in the photograph I'm telling you the black and white photograph arena hands down <laughs> that's gonna help you a lot um, okay I got another question here when do I use transparent colors and what do um, what do we use to thin it with water or medium oh now this is a good good question um, I don't want you all thinning your paint with water except for a tiny tiny bit okay the reason for that is that the water itself that you're using has no adhesive quality to it you know and so at least your water shouldn't be sticky <laughs> I hope your water is not sticky but um, you know the whole idea behind acrylic paint this stuff right here you know this is a pigment floating in a polymer medium and that polymer medium is sticky right you all know that you get it stuck to your hands and stuff right well if you don't have any polymer medium in your paint and you thin it with a lot of water then it's not going to bond to the surface of the canvas and so you really are doing yourself a disservice so don't do that okay use airbrush medium exactly where I was going to point you airbrush medium is super thin super super thin and yet it's still sticky so you, you get the best of both worlds there it's almost like you're painting with water but it's still sticky okay and in that video that you're going to see where I'm pouring paint and stuff like that that is on unprimed canvas with flow release so there's a lot of a lot of stuff you can do with water but you definitely don't want to use a lot of watered down paint on regular canvas like this because you need that polymer bond to stick the to stick the um, the pigment to the canvas okay and we'll talk about that at, you know at some point and you could also get over and see my my pal Michelle Thiberge she has a YouTube um, a YouTube channel Michelle Thiberge she used to be with um, uh, Liquitex and as a matter of fact I think uh, I think she's we're gonna do an interview in a couple of weeks I'm gonna be guest hosting or guest posting over on her YouTube channel so I'll be over there um, she's got a really good video about under binding your paint with water it's called the number one mistake acrylic painters make and it's got like a million views because it's so good it's a really good video take a look at that okay 
Glazing medium. What do you, you want to know about glazing medium? Well, acrylic glazing fluid is um, is a is a medium that'll kind of slow down the drying time of the paint. And so, um, as a matter of fact, I have some right here. Voila, with fingerprints all over it, right? <laughs> Um, and I use this to make transparent layers of glaze, hence the name glazing liquid, right? They make it easy for us, glazing liquid, to make a glaze. So you can use uh, a lot of that. You know, you could use 90% glazing liquid and 1%, 10% paint to make a really thin transparent layer. And in fact, that's exactly how I'm using it on this particular painting that I'm working on right now with the Lotus. So you'll see that. Um, flow release. What is flow release? Well, flow release. Oh, Rena, thank you. You saw the flow release video that we did up in Montana. That was so much fun. Oh my God, that was a blast. Um, yeah, the, the flow release now is an additive. It's not a medium. It's an additive. And so it's created to make well, the way that we explain it is it's created to make water wetter and it's amazing what it does. And Rena, it looks like you have already seen that video. Granny, I suggest you jump over to the video when we're done here and take a look at that what I'm, when I'm showing you how to use flow release. Really cool product, extremely cool. And in fact, when I'm working on unprimed canvas, it is my go-to thing. That's what I use. Tons of it. You know, you mix it with water, you put paint down, and you have a blast, okay? So um, that's why the floor in my studio right now is blue. Because <laughs> I've been pouring paint, and you know, it's everywhere. So I'm in my home studio, which is my video studio. I don't do any big paintings here. I just do little stuff here. The big messy studio is, is you know, elsewhere. Okay, um, so that's the scoop. We, we had glazing liquid, acrylic glazing liquid, flow release, and some gels, which was our topic today. And I just wonder if these are, it's really, um, it's kind of cool and damp here in San Francisco right now. So it's been raining today, so these are not going to be dry anytime soon. But like I said, I'll take a shot and, and put it in the in the show notes. I'll put a link to that so you can see it. But um, that's my pastel baby colors for today. <laughs> all right. You all have been great. Um, Granny, you saw the video, but you still didn't understand what it was. Well, it's an additive. So when you get the flow release, you mix it with water. 80% water, 20% flow release. And what it does, go back and take a look at the video. And at the very beginning of that video, you're going to see me put down regular um, Hansa yellow fluid and see how it sits on top of the canvas. Then I put down Hansa yellow fluid with flow release and it saturates right into the canvas. So it allows you to saturate the canvas with color in a way that you can't do any other way. Water won't do it. Fluid paint won't do it. If you want to do big pour type paintings on canvas, flow release is the thing you need. Okay, and maybe I'll take the uh, I'll take the video camera outside when it gets warmer, and I'll do another flow release video for you guys, a new one. Okay, all right, we're gonna start wrapping it up here. I'm gonna just see if I've got any other questions. Super duper, you've been fabulous. It's been fun. It always is. I'll see you back here next week, same time, same bat channel, <laughs> same 4 p.m. time here in uh, here in San Francisco. And um, if you have any questions along the way, just pop over at Facebook, and I'm over there. Check me out Thursday night's class on Creative Flow. I would love to have you inside there and um, all the other stuff we've got going online. I've got my online school. I'm going to put that up here for you. So there are some free classes you can take over at learnacrylicdiva.com. There's some free stuff over there. Um, Rena wants to know, will it work on primed canvas? No, 
No, are you talking about flow release? Yeah, don't use that on primed canvas. It has no adhesive, uh, adhesive stuff in it, okay? It's not meant to adhere to primed canvas. Use it on unprimed canvas only, okay? You're, you're welcome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. You have to keep me busy. Keep me off the streets or I get in trouble, okay? All right. <laughs> so check back with me next week. Check into Creative Flow. Check that link that I sent you there. I hope you'll join us on Thursday nights. Learn.acrylicdiva.com has some free classes for you. Jump in over there. And I will see you all next week, okay? Have a fantastic week. Take care. Keep painting. All right? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.